So about two years ago, a friend of mine had moved into his own apartment. The sofa that was in it was old and worn, so he decided that he would try and find one in better condition. He asked me to help him look for one, as my dad had a van, and we would need to use that to transport the sofa. So we went on Craigslist to go have a look at what other people had for sale. We came across one ad that it stated, three-seater cream leather sofa, great condition, free to first viewer. There was a picture of it, and it looked to be in perfect condition. Now, the ad had been up for about a week or so, and we had thought maybe it was already gone, and that they just hadn't taken the ad down yet. So my friend contacted the seller, and nearly instantly got a reply. They said they still had the sofa, and it was available, and we could collect it whenever. I was a bit weary that it was still available. I mean, a free sofa in perfect condition that had been up for a week, and nobody's taken it yet? We thought that maybe there was something wrong with it that could only be noticed when viewing the sofa that was maybe hidden from the pictures. It was a weekend, and we had no plans, so we decided we would go ahead and check out the sofa. My friend contacted the seller back and organized a time and place to meet up. They decided on a local McDonald's parking lot at about 9 p.m., as the seller said that he was at work until 8 p.m. and he would need time to get ready after work. The seller said that he would be driving a green Honda Accord with a trailer. So we pulled up to the McDonald's car park at about 8.50 p.m. There were loads of people around, so we really had no reason to think we would be in danger or anything. At about 8.55, my friend got a text saying that the seller was about 15 minutes away and they had asked him to describe what vehicle we were in, so he described the van we were in to him. About five minutes later, after he had texted the seller what vehicle we were in, an overweight man, around 50 years old, with a gray scruffy beard and greasy gray hair, approached the driver's side window of the van, which was my side by the way, as I was driving the van. He was wearing a plain white t-shirt with what looked to be like food stains all over it, with black jeans with holes torn in them, and dried mud stains all over them, along with a pair of black steel toe boots, also covered in dry mud. He knocked on my window, so I rolled it down a bit. You boys here for the sofa? The man then said in a gravely voice. It sounded like he needed to cough, but couldn't get it out. Uh, yeah, I said to him. Well, Rob's car is broken down just down the road, and his phone batteries died. I was with him and I walked up to get you guys. He's with the car waiting for AA, but you can come down and collect the sofa off him if you want. Me and my friend just looked at each other, really unsure of what to think. Can I get in the van with you guys and we'll go back to Rob together? The guy asked. Um, how far down the road is he? I asked before he then replied back immediately. Not too far but I need to show you where to go. At this stage, my friend pretended to get a phone call. Hello? Yes. Aw, oh, no way, really? We'll be right there. He said, before pretending to hang up on his phone. He then looked at me and said, Dude, we gotta go. My dad needs us to help him with his flat tire. He's stranded on the side of the road. I nodded, knowing that it was a fake call and for us to get the hell away from this creepy-ass guy. We gotta go now, but we'll contact you tomorrow about the sofa. I said. The guy just stared at me as I rolled up my window and started driving away. Me and my friend looked at each other. Dude, that was creepy as hell. I got really bad vibes off that guy. Yeah, definitely. I replied back to him. We decided to drive around the back of the car park just to see if we could find out if the guy was up to something or not. We could see him standing in the same spot where we left him, and he was on the phone. He put his phone down, and after about two minutes, a car then pulled up with three men in it, and he then got in. My friend's phone then started ringing, and it was the number of the Rob guy who was supposedly giving away the sofa. He answered, Hey, can you guys meet up tomorrow? I can hold onto the sofa for you until then if you want. As he was on the phone, I noticed one of the men in the car that had collected the creepy guy was also on the phone. 
Well, my friend told Rob that he would contact him tomorrow and that he was busy and that he couldn't talk right now. At the same time that my friend hung up on the phone, the guy who was in the car also finished his phone call. At this point, I explained to my friend that there was probably no car that had broken down and that that creepy guy was just trying to lure us somewhere so that the guys in the car could do God knows what to us. We drove home and my friend blocked the number of Rob and we never heard from them again. We ended up reporting the ad, and it was removed the next day. So, let me start out by saying that you really need to be careful if you're an aspiring actor or model, especially when you're looking for gigs specifically. I was 18 years old when this happened, and I look back and think just how stupid I was. And I guess sometimes even at 18, you don't know any better. That at 18... You don't have the capacity to know the amounts of horrible people out in the world. That is, unless you've never experienced the horribleness of this world for yourself. Anyways, on to the story. I was an aspiring model at the time, and I had moved to Los Angeles, and I was looking to get signed by an agency. And when that wasn't happening, I got a little irritated, and I kind of wanted to rush the process. So I ended up looking on Craigslist. Because someone else that I worked with at a restaurant told me that she found a couple of good gigs on Craigslist. She said if you want to build your resume, it would be a quick easy fix. So I go on Craigslist and I see an ad that says looking for models for the BET awards. So I decided to contact the ad and I got a response. And it seemed pretty professional. The email was designed to look as if it was actually by the company who's hiring models for the BET awards. They responded by telling me exactly what I would be doing, which would just be on the red carpet interviewing and standing next to the rappers and singers. So they set up a time to meet with me, and it's at a hotel. And I'm thinking, okay, I've done hotel meetups, but it's usually been in the lobby, so that's what I was picturing when I was going to go to this audition. So I pull up, and I'm greeted by a woman, and she tells me it's on the third floor, and there's apparently a lounge area where she told me it would be held at. So I was expecting to see a lot of girls because usually during auditions you see the lines of girls waiting to do an audition and then they'll call you in. So I get upstairs and I see there's a big fat man just sitting in a chair in the lounge area where I was directed to go. I was kind of confused because I didn't see any of the other girls auditioning besides myself. So yeah, that was my first red flag that I didn't pay attention to. Again, be very careful. Always go with your gut when you feel a red flag immediately. I decided to sit down and talk to this man, and he made me feel comfortable. He asked me everything I've done, and he asked for my portfolio, and it all seemed really legit at that point. And then he continues to explain what would be happening at the BET Awards. So he then said okay, and that he needed me to sign some paperwork to get everything rolling. That's when he then asked me to come to his room, which was my second red flag that I really should have listened to. I was hesitant, but I said okay. So we're walking down to his room and we get into the room and he locks the door. Another red flag. So I get super uncomfortable and I'm just praying in my head that the Lord can help me and get me the hell out of this situation because I was so scared that this man was going to hurt me and maybe even kill me and no one would know where I was at because I didn't tell anyone where I was going. That was also a stupid 18 year old move that I never should have done. Always tell someone where you're going to be and the address of where you're going to be at. So he sat at the end of the bed and he asked me to give him a massage. And let me remind you, when you're in a situation like this, a lot of people think they know what they would do. But in actuality, you really have no idea what you do. And sometimes you may do things that you don't feel comfortable doing. And I'm sure everyone's probably going to think I'm stupid. But I did start giving him a massage since he said this is what I was going to have to do to the rappers and singers, or whatever, at the awards that night. He then started caressing my butt, and that's when I then backed up and said that I have another audition that I really have to go to, so I have to leave. But thank goodness, this man allowed me to leave. He then said okay and that they'll give me a call. I then said thank you, and I ran to my car. I didn't even see the lady that was downstairs directing me, but I started crying. I just sat there and cried and just felt so disgusted and horrible with myself. I felt so violated. 
and I really wish now, looking back 10 years later, that I would have just called the police. Because I'm really not sure just how many other girls went to that audition and ended up worse than I was. Again, I just want my story to be out. So that way if you're a young model or an aspiring actor, you make sure to tell people where you're going and do not look on Craigslist for acting and modeling gigs. And if you're 18, you still need to ask your parents about these things. Also, always listen to your gut when you feel there's danger. And I mean always. So, my fiancé and I have been on the lookout for a kitten to accompany our three-month-old kitten that we already have. We searched and searched until one day he said to me, Why don't we look on Craigslist? So I did. We found the perfect one, but the only problem was that it was two hours and 30 minutes away from our home. I inquired about it at about 10.30 p.m. I know, it was late, but almost immediately... I got a response. She sounded very nice over text, and she had asked to see where I lived so that she would feel settled about the kitten living with us. She also insisted on us going to their house. I know, I should have just dropped it, but at the time, I thought nothing of it. So I sent them a video, and we set up a time for the next day to meet. The very next day came. I wasn't going to take my fiancé, but he insisted on coming with me because he wanted to be my protection. Just in case, because, you know, Craigslist is sketchy. So we drove the two hours and 30 minutes on our way there. As we were on our way, I was texting this girl that we would get there on time, and she responded back with, Great, see you then. We arrived at the home with me in the driver's seat, and my fiancé in the passenger seat with the window down. I texted the girl, but got no response. I called, and again, no response. I ended up calling five times and texting in the course of an hour, and still no response. I went up to the house and knocked on the door. Nothing. There was a car in the driveway, but there was no response from the number or the door. We got there at 6.30 and waited until almost 8. Nothing. The neighbor came out asking what was wrong, and I said that I'm here since I inquired about a kitten. And she said, Um, a kitten? I replied back with, Yeah, it was an ad on Craigslist. Um, no one has kittens in this home though, she said. I showed her the ad, and she said, Oh, I know them. They're very sketchy people, and they don't own any cats. I actually just helped them move their furniture yesterday. So I said back, well, on their ad, it says they have to get rid of their kittens since their new place doesn't allow pets. So the neighbor said back, well, that's impossible. I have a dog and so does the next door over. I immediately found this creepy and I assumed the neighbor was in on it as well since it was just way too creepy and I was feeling anxious. I thanked her then left along with my fiance. Literally immediately when we pulled out of the street, I got a text from the girl then saying, I'm just now getting your messages. Something must be wrong with my phone. Do you still want the kitten or not? I didn't reply and we headed back home. What I really don't understand is, they didn't get any money from me, but they asked me to show up not knowing I'd be with my fiance. I had a bad feeling about it. What the hell did they want from me? I'm a female, and when I was 19 years old, I was looking for a room to rent in the city that I was moving to for college. It was about an hour away from my family. I wasn't really having much luck, and my mom had started helping me look for a place. She found an ad on Craigslist for a room that was about $300 in a house, everything included. The homeowner was a man, and he rented the additional rooms upstairs to other women while he lived in the finished basement. The ad stated that he rarely ever saw the other roommates because he had a kitchen and his own entrance downstairs, and that he preferred women because he had issues with male roommates in the past partying and causing damage. We decided to take a look since it was the cheapest that we could find in the area. My mom and I went to the house to view it. Decent house, decent neighborhood. 
He opened the door and he was honestly very welcoming. He was middle-aged and the kitchen and living room were very furnished nicely and really clean. My mom loves to talk and get to know people, so they were really engaged in conversation while I stood there quietly and just observed the place. He then said he would show me my room. We head towards the staircase to go up, just as I thought, since he said on the phone my room was upstairs with the other roommates, but he opens another door and we follow. He takes us down to the basement and opens a door to a very small room, no closet and no windows. He then proceeds to say that this is my room and that I'm going to be sharing the bathroom in the hallway with him and that apparently his bedroom didn't have a door on it. I was definitely thinking, absolutely not, this is weird, but they were so deep in conversation that I just couldn't interject. He then leads us to the upstairs and shows us the other rooms which the doors were open and then says they're currently rented. He then starts telling us really elaborate stories about the other women, not very nice stories, describing drinking problems. My mom was listening intently, but I took the time to investigate further. I looked in all three rooms in the bathrooms. There was furniture, but not a single item in there that looked like it had belonged to a woman. No clothes or anything, only men's clothes in one of the closets. He had no problem with me creeping around his tenants' rooms without their permission. I then heard him tell my mom that he has some of his stuff in their closets, but they don't mind. And I'm just like, uh, why the hell would a tenant pay you for you to use their space as storage? It just doesn't make any sense. I was feeling really uncomfortable and I started moving them back downstairs as they talked. My mom had mentioned when they arrived that her and my dad were going on vacation the next week but that I couldn't go because I had to work. He brought that up again and that I should come by the next week and have dinner with him and the roomies just to see if we'd all get along. I said sure and we left. As soon as we got in the car, I told my mom that I would definitely not be living there. She was totally dumbfounded by this. I had to explain to her that not only did he lie about the room I would be in, that I wasn't even supposed to be in the basement with him as well as share a bathroom with him and he didn't even have a damn door. But also, did she not notice how no one else even lived there? She still didn't get it, and she thought that I was just being paranoid, and that he was really nice, and it was a cheap deal. I had to explain it to my stepdad, and get him to tell her that by no means would I be living there. I tried to report the post, but by the time we got home that day, he had removed it. I think that he planned on murdering me at dinner, or maybe abducting me and holding me hostage in that basement room, that had no way to escape. I really hope that guy hits a damn tree with his car one day. So upon ending my story, I realized there was a few things that I left out and I wanted to mention them here. This happened in 2011, so it's been quite a while. When he took us upstairs, there was a wide landing that was surrounded by the rooms. As soon as we got up there, he motioned towards one of the rooms and started this long, intricate story about the woman who lived there and talking about her alcoholism and a crazy ex. He was very exaggerated in how he talked, with a lot of gestures. My mom just stood there listening to him. I don't know if it was just sheer distraction or she didn't want to be rude not listening, but either way, I don't recall her ever having a look around those rooms. I went and looked. All doors were open had neatly made beds with dark wood bed frames, also bureaus with mirrors and nightstands. There were sliding mirror closets and they were empty, except for one that had men's clothes hanging pushed against one corner. Nothing was on the nightstands other than a lamp and nothing on the bureaus. I went into the bathrooms and there was nothing on the vanity in them other than hand soap. I looked into the showers too, but there was nothing other than bar soap. The bedroom on the left had an empty suitcase that was laying open on the middle of the bed. This was one of the rooms with the empty closet. After seeing all this, I came back into the landing and then started slowly heading down the stairs. They were still talking and absentmindedly followed me down into the living room. That's when he mentioned dinner and we left shortly after. I think that's when my mom didn't notice a lot and didn't believe me at first. She didn't take more than a quick glance upstairs and when we were in the basement, he was just as talkative. A commenter on here who works with law enforcement pointed out that this was probably a sex trafficking situation. 
The bedroom in the basement is where a victim is kept, drugged, and then abused until broken, and then finally trafficked. I honestly think this is more plausible with the situation, as well as my city's actually a hotspot for that. I'm so grateful we got the hell out of there when we did, and I really hope my experience could help someone one day notice the details and get out of the situation safely. Stay safe and blessed out there.